This video is a continuation of arithmetic series, but now what we're going to do is introduce a new symbol that we use uh, when dealing with sequences and series, um, specifically series, that is called sigma. All right. Now, sigma is a Greek letter, all right, that's used to indicate sum. So it makes sense that we go along with series. All right. Um, and the way that it's kind of represented is it kind of gives you a number on the bottom and a number on top. All right. The number on the bottom is what is called the lowest or the lower limit. And the number on top is called the upper limit. These kind of tell you the positions of the terms that you are finding. All right. And we're going to look at it when the lower limit starts at one or starts somewhere else. And then the upper limit where it ends. And what those two numbers, the bottom and the top, tell us is how many terms there are in the series. So those will tell us our n values in our formula. Okay? So if you look at our series formula for arithmetic, we still have n over 2 times the first term and the last term. To find the first term, what we're going to do is take the number on the bottom and substitute it in. To find the last term, we take the number on top and substitute it in. And I know this may seem a little bit confusing right now, guys, but it's actually pretty simple, but definitely requires practice. All right. So we're going to we're looking to simply use that formula, but the questions are going to look drastically different. All right. So in this first one, they want us to evaluate this series described. The first thing I have to do is figure out how many terms there are in this series. The number of terms is from 1 to 9. Now, if you count with me the numbers 1 through 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, there are 9 terms. So what I'm able to deduce from these symbols from this bottom part and this top part, is that we know n is equal to 9. Now, another way that we're going to find this, or that we could find this, is to take the top number minus the bottom number plus 1. All right? And that's going to be very important. That's what this is saying right up here. Okay? That's going to be very important when all of a sudden it's not from 1 to 9. What if it's from like 3 to 9 or something like that, okay? So we've got our one piece here. We know how many terms. We also need to find the first term and the last term. To find the first term, a sub 1, we're going to take 10 times the number on the bottom minus 3, which gives me 7. So I know that my a sub 1 is 7. There's our second piece that we need to be able to use the formula. Then we need to find our last term, or a sub n. Well, in this case, I know that's going to be a sub 9. Plug 9. I used that number on top. That's how I got the 9. Plug 9 into the equation. 10 times 9 minus 3 gives me 87. So a sub 9 is 87. Once I have these three pieces of information, we simply go to the series formula that says S sub 9 is equal to 9 over 2 times the first term plus the last term. All right, so this would be S sub 9 would be 4.5 times 94, and S sub 9 here would be, let's see, 4.5 times 94, 423. All right, so let's try another one like this. All right, so in this particular sequence, I know that n is going to be 50 minus 1 plus 1, or in other words, I know that n is 50. To find a sub 1, I'm going to plug in the bottom. So I have 10 minus 10 times 1, which would be 0. 
to find a sub n, which in this case, the last term would be a sub 50, I take 10 minus 10 times 50. All right, let me double check my arithmetic. 10 minus 10 times 50 be negative 490. All right, I have my three pieces of information. So I know the S sub 50, the sum of these 50 terms, is going to be 50 divided by 2 times the first term, 0, plus the last term, which would be negative 490. So the sum of these 50 terms would be 25 times negative 490. So 25 times 490 be negative 12,000, negative 12,000, I think it was 250, wasn't it? Yep. All right. Another way that they could use sigma here is notice the difference. In the one that we just finished, it started on the bottom with 1. n is equal to 1. Now notice the bottom of this one. It says k is equal to 2. Well, what this says is we're adding the second through 16th terms together. So to find the number of terms, n, I take the top minus the bottom plus 1. And that would tell me that there are 15 terms in this series. All right? To find the first term in this series, all right, I'm going to plug that in, the bottom number in. So the first term in this series, which would be a sub 2, is going to be 2 times 15 minus 9, or 21. To find the 16th term, I'm going to take 2 times 15. Sorry. Holy cow, I just messed all that up. Hold on, hold on. Let me erase myself. I got a little carried away. Sorry, I got distracted. All right. A sub 2 would be 2 times 2 minus 9. I'm plugging the bottom in. All right. And that would be negative 5. And then a sub 16 would be 2 times 16 minus 9. That would be 32 minus 9, or 23. Ooh, sorry about that. So to find the sum of these 15 terms, I'm going to take 15 divided by 2 times negative 5 plus 23. So the sum of these 15 would be 7.5 times 18. Grab my calculator, 7.5 times 18. I would get 135. All right, let's try one last one like this, all right? So to find the total number of terms in here, I'm going to go top minus bottom plus 1. All right, and that tells me that there are 50 terms in this sequence. All right, in this series, sorry. To find the first term of the series, we're going to find a sub 5, which would be 9 times 5 minus 1, or 44. To find the 54th term, I'm going to take 9 times 54 minus 1, and I need a little help with that. 9 times 54 minus 1 be 485. But now I've got all my information to find this series, or the sum of these 50 terms. S sub 50 is equal to 50 over 2 times the first term in the series, plus the last term in the series. 
So S sub 50 would be 25. Uh, let me just double check. 44 plus 485 would be 529. So the sum of these 50 terms would be 25 times 529 or 13,225. 13, 200, is that right? 225. I hope this helps. Let me know if you guys have any questions.